Current research shows that more than half of sexually active men and women are infected with HPV at some time in their lives. New screening technologies, vaccines, and updated guidelines have brought many changes in recent years to the fields of HPV research and cervical cancer prevention. For insight on these and other related topics, we turn to Dr. Hunter Hansfield, a physician, veteran researcher, and expert in the field of sexually transmitted infections. Dr. Hansfield is with the University of Washington Center for AIDS and STDs, and for 25 years, he directed the STD control program for the Public Health Department in Seattle. Dr. Hansfield is also a member of the American Social Health Association's Board of Directors. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that the partners of people with HPV infection need not get examined unless they notice something wrong. This is a little bit controversial, but it surprises a lot of people. Gee, if my partner has this STD, why shouldn't I get checked uh, for it? Uh, the problem is that HPV infections are no more common in the partners of people with known infection than they are in anybody else. Having or getting genital area HPV is normal. It is not desired, but it happens to the very large majority of all sexually active people, at least once. And some of us have several infections. Fortunately, the large majority of those infections stay asymptomatic, never cause disease, and go away eventually. The fact that a minority of infections can cause important health problems is, of course, an issue that needs to be dealt with, and it's one of the reasons the vaccines are important to help prevent those complications. But people should not look at HPV as a surprising abnormality. It's something that is essentially inevitable. People need to take a common sense level headed approach to prevent serious outcomes, but otherwise don't lose a lot of sleep over it. In fact, this can be thought of as analogous to the fact that we all carry potentially virulent bacteria on our skins. All of us have strep or staph from time to time on our skins. Yes, once in a long while, those things can cause dangerous and even life threatening infections, but carrying the bacteria is not abnormal. It's really, in many ways, the same with HPV. By the time HPV is diagnosed because of an abnormal pap smear, because genital warts appear, the infection has typically been present for months and sometimes even years. Therefore, the sex partner of that individual is more likely than not to be sharing the same infection already. So at that point, there's really no point in ceasing sexual activity or beginning to use condoms if they haven't been used before. The apparently uninfected person needs to be on the alert for symptoms and signs, such as development warts, which can then be treated. But if he or she remains asymptomatic, this really should not be a particular concern to the couple. If you cause a lot of emotional stress, if you cause a lot of where did this come from and how long have I had it? But the fact is that HPV is a chronic infection Acquired asymptomatically, it can sit silent for a long period of time and then show up. And the new diagnosis of an HPV infection in a monogamous couple does not necessarily imply that either of them has been sexually unfaithful to the other. From the standpoint of preventing transmission, there's really no need to tell partners about distant past HPV infections that have resolved and are not causing current symptoms or health problems. If you have questions about HPV vaccines, visit www.ashastd.org to learn more.